Nahum chapter 3. Woe to the bloody city. Murder. Sin. That's what God is describing Nineveh as. It is all full of lies. And robbery. Murder, lies, and theft. The prey, not P-R-A-Y, the prey departeth not. There's no end. It's going on, it's continuing on, it's not stopping. People are a prey and it's not stopping. Sound like uh, America. The noise of a whip. The noise of the rattling of the wheels. And of prancing horses. And of jumping chariots. War. Battle. Armies. The horsemen lift up both the bright sword. And the glittering spear. Armor. And there is a multitude of slain. And a great number of carcasses. And there is none end of their corpse. They stumble upon their corpse. Romans 6.23 The wages of sin is death. That bright sword. Romans 13.3 and 4 The government carrying out execution because of crime. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms. Of the well-flavored harlot. The mistress of witchcraft that selleth nations through her whoredom and families through her witchcraft. Television and media, the magic kingdom. Magic, witchcraft, all the television programs about witches, all the books about sorcery. God's against it. And it's going on in Nineveh. Murder, lies, robbery, people being preyed upon, and it's not ending. There is whoredoms of a harlot, mistress of witchcraft. You know, women not married, mistress. Of witchcraft that selleth the nations of her whoredom and families through her witchcraft. So when you find Mystery Babylon or Revelation, there she is. Nineveh is just a type of what that great nation will be. Great nation of sin, of wickedness. And God's pronouncing judgment upon him. Behold, I'm against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. For what? Murder, lies, robbery, taking prey of the people, multitude of whoredoms, witchcraft. And I will discover thy skirt upon thy face. And I will show the nations thy nakedness. And the kingdoms thy shame. What you do in secret God will do out in the open. Before his judgment seat. God will bear all. There's no sins that are in secret. Open, uncovered. If you are sinning against your spouse, if you are sinning against your parents, if you are sinning against your employer, if there are sins against your employee, it will come out in the open. Now, I didn't say on this earth, 
It may come out on this earth. It may not. One day we'll find out what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. One day we'll know the truth about Emily Earnhardt. Amelia Earnhardt. We'll know exactly what happened to John F. Kennedy in Dallas, Texas. We'll know about those emails of Hillary. And we will know about your life. Those skeletons you have in the closet, you better open that door. You better put them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You better seek mercy and grace. And get them under the blood before God opens the door. When God opens the door, it better be blood. And the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It'll come out. The only thing that will not come out is any and all sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1 9. I will cast. This is God speaking. I will cast abominable filth. Malachi 2 3. Upon thee. And make thee vile. And will set thee as a gazing sun. Look what God did to them. Do you believe what happened to them? There are some people who have been open in sins and they have been a glazing stock to people in their church, their neighborhood, their job, their family. Look what happened to him. And it shall come to pass. It means it's going to happen. When it shall come to pass, mark it down, it's going to happen. That all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. What is it today? Gone. Wait. Who will be moon her? Who's going to lamb it for her? Who's going to be sad for her? Who's going to sing country western song for her? When shall I seek comforters for thee? There'll be no outside help, no aid. They'll be all alone in their sin. Art thou better than populous? No, that's a city. It's one of those Bible cities you can have fun with tele with uh, telephone calls. Tell me where you live. No. God, tell me where you live. No. Tell me where you live. No. That was situate among the rivers. A great place to be in the desert region of the Middle East. That had the waters round about it. Good seaport, whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was from the sea. The sea was her life, the sea was her occupation, the sea was her protection, the sea was all she had. Great place for no. Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength. No. And it was infinite. Put. That's another name for a city. And Lubman were thy helpers. All these people. And yet in her fall. Are gone. No help. No aid. You know what you find out by making friends with people? In your worst time they're not going to be there. When you are in your sin. And America's learning that today and she doesn't even behave to it. How many women have become pregnant 
are with child and giving birth to children and the man never to be around in your sin if you done what God told you to do on marriage there would be no problems you wouldn't need you'd be putting the condom business out of order there would be no diseases to worry about yet when you're given a VD not something you broadcast it's not something hey everyone come and learn what I got many that do have them they're alone yet was she carried away no was carried in that way her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of the streets hey, she had Ethiopia she had Egypt she had put she had Lin she had all these helpers where are they America's got no helpers and they cast lots for honorable men You get the black ball, you can have that guy. The short straw gets him. And all her great men were brought, or excuse me, were bound in chains, handcuffs, leg irons. Listen, it just didn't happen to the Africans. All right, get off it. Slavery, as bad as it is, is a worldwide event. Thou also shalt be drunken. Alcoholism as a result of sin. It's not a disease. It's a cause by sin. And you're never going to get anybody saved by calling it alcoholism. You walk up to that woman, you walk up to that man, you grab that bottle, you grab that can, and tell them, it is sin! And you are not pleasing God. Then what they do with it is between them and God. You call it alcoholism, you are giving them an excuse, and an excuse is sin. I got a problem. It's alcoholism. We can't quit because I'm an alcoholic. You just gave them an excuse. You stand before God as giving someone a sin to continue in their sin. You stand in their shoes. I won't. You face God that day. I'm not going to. They are drunken because of their sin. Alcohol is a result from your sin. If America really wanted to get right and really to be a Christian nation, that would be the first thing she would stop. We did at one point in time in this country, we put a stop to it, we called it prohibition, and then we came back to it. And we haven't been a Christian nation since. Ask them in the, in the, in the middle part of America when we had it called the Dust Bowl. You know what dust is in the Bible? Dust is what man is made of. You know what dust is in the Bible? They put it on their head when they were lamenting. You know what dust represents? Represents death. You know what God said when he said, okay, America, you want to go back to alcohol? Yeah, we want our drink. All right, here. Thou shalt be hid. Thou shalt seek strength. Because of the enemy. No God, no strength. No victory. No accomplishment through sin. All thy strongholds, your walls, your towers, shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. So evidently, if you were to go up to a fig tree and it's just 
the time of ripe fig, the wind blows, you can just sit there and just, ah, enjoy the figs. Just the shaking will shake loose the fruit. That is what your strongholds are going to be as sin. With sin. About sin. Doing sin. The wind will cause you to be shaken. Anxiety. Fear. Give it all the names the shrinks want to give it to. They are a result of sin. But we want to give them nice little names, pretty little uh, uh, abbreviations. And you're giving them excuse for sin. I'm reading to you out of the Bible. You don't like it? You face God. You tell God you got a problem. We have seen alcoholism. And we have seen fear because of sin. There's no strength. Behold thy people in the midst of thee are women. Most people will hate that expression. You're like a woman. You're scared. You're timid. The Bible says she's the weaker vessel. He's talking about the people in the city. You are a bunch of pantywaist sissies, guys who wear pink shirts and don't even know what bathroom to use. Amen. Nahum chapter 3. You can't even look in your pants to see what you are. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for being... There's no other way to be... I, I try to be clean with that. Try to be women. I haven't read any women who want to go in the male's bathroom. I have read about men who want to go in a little girl's bathroom. Nahum chapter 3 verse 13. You walk up to that panty waist and you tell him you're a sinner and get out of this godforsaken country. Go tell them in Russia you want to go in their female's bathroom. Go over to Afghanistan while they chop your off. Oh, I'm going to say something. You know, you want to be a sodomite in a Muslim country, they will chuck you off a building. We are Nineveh. We are not as bad as Jerusalem. We are Nineveh. We're getting awfully close to Jerusalem. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open. What gates does America have? We have a woman standing in the harbor. Bring us all your dead beats and we'll give them welfare and we'll give them our jobs. We forgot something. We forgot something. We forgot the statue called Responsibility. The next book we're going to read is Habakkuk, Lord willing. It says in there, if a man gives you a drink, he wants to see you naked, but he doesn't want to take the responsibility of you getting pregnant. Yep. Now watch this. America, whoever is going to be the next idiot president, you are an idiot to be a president. The president right now, who is an idiot? I can say that. Because all the presidents have been idiots. Who would want that job at the little pay it offer? What? The, 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 I'm, oh, I'm really going. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thy enemies. Little children, bring your prayer mats to class next week and we'll pray towards Mecca. There's nothing wrong with Mohammedans. There's nothing wrong with Islam. They're great little people. They only brought down the two towers in New York, but they're good little people. Do you realize I was in the Navy temporarily? I worked on submarines in my hometown. Do you realize in the Navy, I don't know, but maybe other branches of the military, I don't know. Do you realize in our Navy we have every person that's an element of every country in this world? We've had people during the Afghan war that would throw bombs into our own their own troops tents they say islam is in america I, I i don't know they are our enemy i'll give you a greater enemy maryland 
We allowed Maryland to come in and be right next to Washington, D.C. Maryland is an enemy of the gospel because they are Roman Catholics. And if you study your history in your school, Fox's Book of Mars and the Inquisitions and all that, they were burning and killing Bible-believing Christians. As a Christian nation, they are our enemies. But we have a piece of paper that says you can practice your religion. Just don't bake a cake. Why is America in the condition she is in? Because we allowed enemies of the gospel, enemies of God in our country. And they're living here. And they've taken over. The fire shall devour thy bars. Well, wait a minute. The gates are still there. They're just wide open. Draw the waters. I guess with a blue pencil. Draw the waters for the siege. That's not a good word. Fortify thy strongholds. Go into clay and tread the mortar. Make strong the brick room. Start building. Start building your defenses. Get the bricks. Make bricks. Bricks are used for walls. God's telling them, start making bricks. Start making them. Go ahead. There shall the fire devour thee. While you're trying to build your strongholds, the fire comes. You know what Israel was doing when God came and got them out of Egypt? They were making bricks, weren't they? You know what God did when, when he came down and uh, visited Babel? Weren't they making bricks too? Wouldn't it be interesting if America started making bricks for something? I don't know. Just reading the Bible. It's happened three times. The sword shall cut thee off. Let's go ask that ear of Malak, whatever the guy's name. Death. Army. Army occupation. It shall eat thee up like... Now, where have you seen that guy before? Ever since Joe, that the canker worm keeps showing up. The canker worm is a great munition of God. Make thyself many as the canker worm. Make thyself many as the locust. And there's a lot of them. Thou hast multiplied thy merchants. Sales, goods, booths, uh, merchandise, retail, above the stars of heaven. Isn't that where Babel wanted to go? Thou hast multiplied thy merchants above the stars of heaven. That's a weird expression. And I can't fit it, but if you were going to explain merchandise and merchandise wouldn't you say east to west north to south you have gotten yourself a large circle you have gained a lot of area a lot of ground but for some particular reason he uses the expression going up to heaven stars stars in the bible are angels some of them angels are fallen angels The canker worm spoileth. He makes the food bad. You ever open up a, uh, a particular cereal, open up the bag, it's been sitting for a while, and there's little worms and stuff and bugs crawling around? You know, that now it wasn't the canker worm. It was bugs. That's one of the things that infested the pilgrims aboard the Mayflower. Bugs in the, in the grain and everything. Makes it bad. Who wants to have a canker worm sandwich? Maggots. Maggots. 
and fleeth away. Canker Worm does his damage and says bye. Good. He's not even there to, for you to see the damage. You just see the damage, but what caused that? Remember our study with, with Joe? That canker worm, he, he's, a, he's a little interesting little thing to go study. They crowned, oh, excuse me, thy crown are as a locust. The king and thy captains as the great grasshoppers which camp in the hedges in the cold day now when Israel came back from visiting the land and reported to Moses Aaron and Joshua there's giants in the land we're just like grasshoppers grasshoppers are likened to people in the Bible Another particular in interesting study. Which camp in the hedges in the cold day? I have no idea. But when the sun arises, they flee away. They get out of the hedges. And they place and their place is not known where they are. There are a bunch of bugs that when you come into the kitchen, turn the light, they're gone. Now let me read a particular, I'll go, you stay here. Let me read something out of the Bible. Scripture with scripture about cockroaches. And this is a great message I preach on the street. John chapter 3. I preach this message. You're, I will tell the people you are a bunch of cockroaches. Amen, he does. John 3. Uh, my other Bible's in a different spot. Let me find it. Alright. 319. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. You walk in the kitchen in the middle of the night, you turn the light on. You ever have anybody in your sleep in bed? You've been sleeping all night and they come in and poof, the light goes on. Oh, man! Oh, you every letter in the book and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light lest their deeds should be reproved so they run away like a cockroach they just leave their droppings all over the place filthy they're filthy I said I said cockroaches are filthy Men are becoming like dogs. A dog is filthy in the Bible, and a dog will sit there with your company and sit on the floor in your living room and do his disgusting deeds as your television set does its filthy deeds, sitting right there with your family. And God tells these people, you're no better than insects, bugs. You bug God. 18. Six, six, six. Watch the Antichrist. The shepherd's slumber. Now I know it says the idol. I D O L shepherd. But it also sounds like the I D L E shepherd. The shepherd's slumber. A nation asleep. Couch potatoes. O king of Assyria, type of Antichrist. While the shepherds are slumbering, what about the sheep? What are the what are the pastors doing today? Do they really care about the people? Or they just want the money or the fame. The shepherds slumber. Jesus Christ, our shepherd, never sleeps. You know what shepherds are supposed to sleep if they sleep? They're supposed to sleep in, in uh, the sheepfold, lying in the door, so if anybody tries to get in or anybody tries to get out, 
they got to go through the shepherd. O king of Assyria, thy nobles, the great people, shall dwell in the dust. Graves. Foxholes. Thy people is scattered upon the mountains. They fled. They're gone. They've been driven away. And no man gathers them. Romans 10, 13, Nahum 1, 15. All right, let's read this passage again. The shepherds slumber. He's going to tell us what this means. O king of Syria. King? King of Syria, listen. The shepherds are slumbering. The nobles shall dwell in the dust. They're going to die. Thy people is scattered upon the mountains. No man gathers them. The shepherds are not taking care of the people. That's what he's telling you. There are people who are dying, and there are people who are scattered, and the shepherds. <laughs> That's going on in churches today of your well known pastors. Some families, you could have co common, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning in your house, and it would take an outsider of your church to realize that you're dead and missing. Your job will call first before your church. Well, I don't go after them. It doesn't help. Well, they went away. They loved the world more than... And they don't even try to get them back. And you are called a shepherd. Christ is our chief shepherd. Shall I read John chapter 10 or shall I just shut up? I think I'll read John chapter 10. I'll read John chapter 10. We've got a few minutes here. John chapter 10. Let's let me find it. I, don't, I like to read the whole chapter, but for sake of time. John chapter 10. Verse 1. Verily, verily. Oh, got to pay attention. It's not surely, surely, or whatever other junk. Verily, verily. Sure, not truly, truly. Verily, verily. I say unto you. That's a song. Verily, verily. I say unto you. I can't. He that entereth not by the door. Did we just read about gate? Into the sheepfold. But climbeth up some other way. The same is a thief and robber. Didn't we just read that? But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but will, fo will flee from him. For they know not the voice of a stranger. Nah. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But I guess there's no other shepherd like Jesus Christ. Unless a pastor gives his life for his sheep. Have you given your life to Lord Jesus Christ and to the flock that God's given you? You're supposed to be Christ-like, aren't you? Aren't you supposed to stand in the water baptizing as Christ stood in the water? But he that's a hireling, someone paid for the money, and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf cometh, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catches them, and scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he's a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, again, I know my sheep, and am known of mine. Here's a guy who's fallen asleep, he doesn't care for the sheep. 
because now they're all over the mountains. I forget where it is. Doesn't Jesus also tell us a parable about a guy who lost one sheep, left the 99 to go find that one sheep? This guy's lost them all. Or if not, a good majority of them. And some of them are in death. They're dead. There is no healing, verse 19 in Nahum 3. We're not done. He thought I was done. There is no healing of thy bruise. No medication. Obamacare couldn't take care of Nineveh. There are diseases and have been diseases and will be diseases that there will be nothing that man can do for you. He may be able to relieve you, but he won't be able to heal you. Thy wound is grievous. Stinks. Disgusting to look at. You can't have anybody come into your room unless you're they're completely sanitized. I've heard about wounds like that. All that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. Brute is animal life. So when you get a men's cologne brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. For upon whom has not thy wickedness passed continually? Nineveh was a wicked city. One time they got right at the preaching of Jonah. But America had her revivals. Yes, America got right. But America, like Nineveh again, she's not getting right. She's not turning to God. She's turned to her enemies. And we see in a book called Nahum, we see present day. Now, if God spares America, America the beautiful, God shed his over thee. One nation under God, in God we trust. And all the filthiness that's going on in 2016, never mind 2017, Lord Terry, of all the filthiness going on, if God doesn't judge this nation, he will have to call up all the occupants, males and females and in-betweens, of Nineveh, the entire population. Now let me go over here. And what did I say? Nahum is approximately 150 years after Jonah. All right, let me show you something. Jonah, the last verse. The last chapter. And should not I spare Nineveh the great sea? That's exactly what we're talking about in Nahum. Where in our more than six score, that's 120,000 persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand. That's a bunch of children say, uh, ten fingers. <laughs> now, Johnny, which one is your right hand? Ten fingers. No, Johnny, which one's your left hand? No, that's your nose, Johnny. Tell me which one's your left hand. Ten. Okay, John, I know you're seven years old, but which one's your... He you can't, you can't tell you. There's 120,000 of those little boys and girls who cannot tell your hands. 150 years later, how much is that population... These children that grew up with parents that got right with God, they're passed on. The great revival's gone. The colleges have stepped into Nineveh. Then now they got false teaching. Now they don't even can't look inside their pants and see what sex they are. They don't want to get right. A hundred and 
120,000 person right now in the end of Jonah who got right. These children grew up and had children. And they had children. And they had children. 150 years. If God does not judge America, he will have to call all these Ninevites before the entire universe, before Satan, before the one-third of the fallen angels, before the cherubims, before his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, before the, the cherubims, before the four and twenty-four elders, he will have to call these Ninevites up and say, I apologize. I judged you and your sins, and I didn't judge America. All Ninevites of the time of, Nine of Nahum, I God's not going to do that. Let me tell you why I know God's not going to do that. <coughs> you read John chapter 3. And I'll read you one verse. The wages of sin is death. America will die because she's sinning. Nineveh died because she sinned. Jerusalem died because she sinned. Babel died because she sinned. Adam died because he sinned. Moses died because he sinned. David died because he sinned. The only one that did not die because he sinned was Jesus Christ, and he died because I sinned. Sin caused death. You want to get right with America? Open up the book of Nahum and teach it in every class. English, science, math, get math back, PE, the introduction of sexual exploitation, and dare to get your children. Dare ain't working. There's more kids on drugs since dare than he dared to even mention. Get your children back in the Bible. Christian parents, get your children back in the Bible. This kind message has been brought to you by God's Word. You got a problem? You take it up with God.